Hey y'all, welcome to another Mobile Mansion Monday. So we have been working on this daggone porch. It started out as a simple, less than $200 makeover, and it ended up being a total demo job and total rebuild job. This is the last episode in the porch series. As far as the actual structure goes, if you wanna catch up, I've got a playlist here that I've listed every single makeover thus far in the Mobile Mansion Mondays series, and I'll be adding more as we go on and completely transform this 1991 double wide so without further ado let's go start to finish and rewind back in time so i can walk you guys through what exactly happened and what exactly is going on now so believe it or not when we first bought this mobile home we had no intentions of even messing with this porch until next year i really really honestly thought i was going to get away with shining a turd and just do a quick coat of paint or stain and be done with it that's what i thought was gonna happen but we all know that when it comes to fearfully created and fearfully created videos i usually get myself into pickles all the time and nothing ever goes as planned i always end up making it work but nothing ever goes as planned what usually ends up happening is i wing it and then the rock star shane comes in and you know shane touches something and it turns to gold in my opinion so i usually end up messing things up he usually ends up fixing those things i messed up for example this porch we were just going to do a quick stain and paint it was going to be a big deal to us because we were removing this carpet which had been really damaged before we bought it it was old it was weathered it was hanging on literally by a thread so that was a big project for us we were dread <laughs> it's so funny looking back we were dreading removing this carpet because i didn't know what was underneath it I, we started removing this carpet though and I started seeing like really, it looked like shredded ham. That's what it looked like. But it was literally where they had laid board in between. I was so proud of myself for getting that carpet off. They laid board in between the carpet and the porch deck. So underneath the carpet was this really thin layer of like sort of plywood. Like I said, it was old. So it really looked like shredded ham. And then underneath the shredded ham, you can see here, we saw planks. Boy, was I so excited to see planks because I was like, yeah, we are going to do something good over here. I'm going to remove these shredded ham planks and then I'm going to get down to the good planks, the deck planks, and it's all going to be good as gravy. They looked like they were in good condition just right away whenever I started removing the flooring. I was like, oh man, these look like they're in good condition. So I got really excited in that first episode and I told you guys, oh, I think we're going to be able to do something with this. Even Shane thought we were going to be able to do something with this mm, but we were not able to do something with this so as we made our way around the porch removing all the carpet and all the shredded ham we started noticing where there were some issues within the structure of the porch some of the planks were rotten and it looked like the banister had seen better days but i don't ever just look forward to the end results i always enjoy the process too so within my days of working on this porch there were little bits of sunshine like getting my silver youtube plaque i was so excited about that little things like that I, it made my day so i like to enjoy the process and learn something through it and not just look forward to the ending result because the process is where the fun stuff is at. So here we are hammering down and sanding, spending hours sanding these planks. Shane spent a long time hammering down staples. I don't really know what our end goal was with that, but, but we spent hours doing it nonetheless. He spent hours hammering down hundreds if not thousands of staples from where the carpet was stapled to the porch and i spent hours upon hours and was in a billion different positions trying to sand this stuff we were honestly trying out anything and everything so that we wouldn't have to go spend a fortune on this and we could use what we had and work with it but then it went south oh there it is There's our first shot. oh my god I was just trying to get a before shot. Oh my gosh. I ain't even gonna do the same thing over here because look, it's split too. Wind. Dag nabbit. Electric. Look. Drills. Ain't nothing but thing. Ain't nothing but thing. That just means now we have every reason to beautify it. As you can see, we're no stranger to things messing up around here and our whole entire just itinerary getting shredded <laughs> to pieces and having to start over and all this stuff because Shane is over here reading winded electric 
drills become a thing <laughs> while I just literally broke the porch. He literally didn't even skip a beat. I literally broke the porch banister and he's over there researching and Googling how and when did electric drills become a thing. <laughs> so since I broke the porch banister, I was like, you know what? We're this far. I've done messed it up this much. How much can I really mess it up more? Never ask that, especially if your name is Marina and you got by fairly created on the internet, never ask how you can mess up something more because there is always a way that you can mess up something more. <laughs> and I'm slowly learning that about myself. So we end up taking all the banisters off. We take the rest of the shredded carpet off and we still at this point thought we could saw down the banister posts here, except for the supporting ones that the roof is attached to, like Shane's doing here. We thought we could saw them down and still somehow use these planks, the deck planks we ended up not being able to use them because they ended up looking like this. And as we were trying to lift them up with a crowbar and kind of move them around and get rid of some of the ones that se were seemingly more rotten than the other ones, we realized they basically were all rotten, given a few of them, and they were just falling apart. They were not in good condition. You can tell they had probably been here a really, really, really long time. Plus, they had been covered and some mold had grew, had grew between the carpet and the planks where that layer of shredded ham was. So, they weren't in the best of condition at all. We couldn't use them. We were just going to sand and stain the porch. Um, so, it started out as a very simple oh, be so easy. hundred buck, hundred dollar. Pish posh. Makeover. Pish posh. Then it fell apart. <laughs> it quite literally fell apart. <laughs> But as I was having to, and I say halfing a lot if you're new here, I'm sorry, it's just a thing. Halfing is not a word, but I make it a word every day. But as we were halfing <laughs> to pry up all of these deck boards, I started thinking about ways that I could change the look of this porch and do a dramatic transformation on it. While we're already in here, we're already getting our hands dirty, why not? Usually the way I stay within my budget is I do small makeovers and I build upon those makeovers. So I do those makeovers in a way that I can build upon them later to make them bigger and better. In this instance, we just went all in. Honestly, we got halfway through the demo of the porch and Shay and I both looked at each other and said, we don't ever wanna touch this again. <laughs> So we were like, let's get it over with. So we brought it down to a shell of the porch that it was and was able to use most of the supports. Shane had to add some to it to make it bigger. But other than that, we were able to use a lot of what was underneath the deck planks. Apparently I was trying to get under the deck planks too because I'm just rolling everywhere. <laughs> I was surprised at how well the support beams underneath the deck planks were. I think the deck planks would have been in much better condition had they not been covered up and kind of concealed the, the way that they were. The carpet on top of the shredded ham, I don't think was a good move. I don't think it was a good idea. What do I know? I'm over here breaking porches for a living, but I mean, it just, I, I just don't think that was a good idea. And I think that's what deteriorated them so, so bad, I guess you could say, because I don't know how long they were there, but they were pretty deteriorated. And I think that the way that stuff was layered on top of them had a lot to do with that. So we bought our first ever lumber bundle from Lowe's. We've been doing this for about two and a half years, working on our home. We did our trailer in the trailer part before now, and now we bought this house and we're working on it. So we have about two and a half years under our belt, and this is the first time we have ever bought a bundle of wood from Lowe's. It came in handy and prevented so many trips back and forth to Lowe's. So we'll definitely be doing this again when we do big projects that require a lot of lumber. We got a huge thing of screws you can see here too. This deck, I love the way that it turned out. And thankfully we did add middle supports because there is a seam going down the middle. If I could do this over, I would not do that seam at all. I would come up with a different design. But at the time, we had never built a deck before. I had researched a little, but we honestly really didn't know what we were doing. And that's the story for a lot of our makeovers is we're learning as we go. So I never ever want people to watch me and see it as a tutorial. Basically, it's just a, a movie. Consider it entertainment because you never know which way it's going to go. It can go south or it can, things go up. You just never know. But I never want to mislead anybody. Not that you would be misled and thinking that I have it all together because Lord knows I do not. But I never want to mislead anybody and have them thinking, oh, this is a tutorial channel because it's really not. This is a watch me while I mess up and hopefully you get inspired a little bit kind of channel. <laughs> so as we went on, I realized the scene was a bad idea, but I was able to keep it without it messing up the structure of the porch. I had a contractor come in who builds decks for a living and he said, since we have those middle support pieces we added that we're good to 
to go, we shouldn't have any issues. But had we not added those supports, it would have been bad and it would have started dipping in within a couple of years. That is not good. So it worked out in our favor, but it could have went really, really south. Here are the support chains added now that kind of saved our tails. And it basically just added another layer in between the seam so that neither of the planks had the opportunity to dip down in the middle and start warping sort of. So Shane lengthened out the porch where the steps dipped in. He lengthened out the porch because I figured that I really wanted porch length steps. I had never really seen porch length steps in person. All I could really find on the internet were really vague pictures. So I told Shane what I wanted, and this is how our makeovers usually go. I told Shane what I wanted. He drew it out on paper, and I kind of let my mind create this image where I wasn't holding back. So I was like, we're not going to hold back here. We're going to do things how we want to do things, how we can afford to do things. Um, but we're going to do them nonetheless, and we're not going to let fear of messing something up get in our way because honestly we had already messed enough up <laughs> we had already messed enough stuff up and it wasn't the end of the world so I wasn't gonna let fear ruin my day I wanted it done and I wanted it done the way that I wanted it done and thankfully I have a husband who he wants it done how I want it done and that I, that's the most precious thing in the world to me is when it comes to home makeovers he goes with whatever I want because he he knows that it's a passion of mine to make over our home. So I always consult him and the kids before I do anything because it's all of our home and not just my home. But I love how Shane wants it done the way that I want it done. That's that's it's precious to me. When we go into a makeover or into a big project, he always says, Rena, however you want it, you tell me and I'll make it happen. And sometimes we have to modify it because my brain gets a little bit creative, a little too creative for its own britches. <laughs> but he modifies it and he ends up making it exactly how I want it. And I'm grateful for that. He is honestly, I know this channel is called Fearfully Created and I am fearfully created, but boy is Shane fearfully and awesomely created like he is he is so awesomely created he really is the rock star of the projects like i'm telling you i cannot do any of this without him he's the rock star of these projects and i'm grateful for him and all the hard work that he puts into this and the way he tries so hard to get things how I want them and he doesn't give up until they are to my liking and I try to not be too difficult to please in this situation but in reality like we both just like working together we work really well together and time that we get together where we're working on our home is just really special to us so we make it work this is our second fireplace we've ever built the first fireplace was in the trailer in the trailer park and this one is a little bit different because it's an outdoor fireplace versus the indoor one that was in the trailer in the trailer park the outdoor one required an outdoor electric fireplace insert which was a lot trickier to find than a regular fireplace insert when i go to decorate the porch i'll make sure to have all of the building plans drawn up for you guys i promised you guys those at the beginning of this series and i haven't forgotten that so i'll make sure that shane has all that ready for you guys in case you want to attempt this or this inspired you to kind of put a spin on your own vision for whatever project we're digging out right here at the steps um shane's using these step shells is what i call them from lowe's they were easier to work with because we really didn't know what we were doing we had never built a set of steps before shane had never built a step uh, steps before so we used the step shells as a God, and it kind of gave us something to build on so we had to dig out around the steps because i wanted the porch length steps shane dug for forever to dig out that little area with just a shovel like by himself so he got all that dug out and we really went in between projects within this project so we would hit up the stairs for a little bit and then we would go back and we would hit up the fireplace then we would hit up the farmhouse beams and we would do it that way because that's how Shane likes to do it <laughs> and I follow his lead when it's his territory which are the projects and stuff and I follow my own lead when it comes to cleaning I have to do things in order I do it I literally go around my house around the wall around the perimeter and then I tackle the inside I do what I call the orbiting system I have to stay on track that way Shane is everywhere <laughs> Shane is chaos on wheels and Shane's bouncing from here to there and I don't mind it whenever it's his territory like the projects because that's how he works best so i always follow his lead when it comes to the projects the stone <laughs> so if you've been here through every episode of the series you know the stone is the bane of our existence i was not happy with the stone the quality the look the everything i was not happy with it it was way too expensive and honestly if it hadn't have been as expensive as it was and i could have returned it i would not have even messed with this stone i would have went a totally different route 
But because it was so expensive, I worked with what I had and I made it work and it actually ended up turning into something I, do, I don't hate. I really don't hate it. I wish I could have went a different route, but I learned next time to, to not, to not order that expensive of something other off of online without knowing a whole lot about it. I knew a little bit about it. I had researched it a little bit, but not a whole lot. Shane's adding in supports under the steps. We're back over here at the steps now. <laughs> Shane's adding supports. Um, he's adding supports underneath every single third. We basically built the guts. When I say we, I mean he. Just always know that. We basically built the guts of the stairs in thirds. So in one third increments. And then on top, so like the cosmetic, the face plate of it basically, we made it look like it was one full step. We gave it that illusion. But underneath, within the guts of the actual structure, it's really three staircases in one. Because I was going with such a dark stain, I went with October Brown by Valspar. Since I was going with such a dark stain, I didn't want Nanny to get tripped up and fall at nighttime when she comes to visit me. So Nanny really inspired these deck lights because I wanted her to be able to see where she was stepping. I told you guys right now we're not doing a railing, but if I need a railing for Nanny, I will do anything for Nanny. I will put a railing up, just whatever helps her. That was a one thing about the old porch and what inspired the makeover to begin with is I needed to fix the steps because the steps were raw and then I didn't want Nanny to fall. So now I've got really sturdy steps and Nanny's going to have fun getting up them things because she's going to be able to see with the deck lights and everything. They're wide enough for her little feet. All the things I took into consideration for Nanny, that's basically what those steps are for, for Nanny. Nanny inspired every bit of that. We wrapped the tiny little beams that held up the roof, the support beams. We wrapped those to make them look thicker. And I say wrapped, I didn't even know there was stuff called porch wrappings or beam wrappings or anything like that until I was over on my friend Jen Morrell from Jen Morrell Stewart. Um, her website, her paid website, she had me feature on it over there and we were talking during a live stream and she had ha just had a contractor wrap her beams on her house. And I was like, there's a word for that? I just thought we were boxing it in. No, it's actually called wrapping the beams to make them thicker, to make them chunkier. So we did that. We literally just boxed it in. That's basically what wrapping is. You just box wood around little wood to make it look and give it the illusion like it's bigger wood. When I realized I wasn't going to be able to use the stone all over the entire front of the fireplace, we we built this pretty little upside down chevron type of design up here at the top and I realized it was too high off the ground. The fireplace insert was entirely too high off the ground. I was going to do like the little hearth thing out front like at the bottom but I was already pushing the budget and I really didn't have any room in my budget to even mess with that. I was going to do a cement one. I didn't have room in the budget. I really didn't have time to even mess with that so we lowered the fireplace insert down and just had the stone on the bottom half and then the upside down chevron pattern on the top half. I wasted so much time not knowing what I was doing. So I was playing with wood filler. Apparently you can't do that outside. Don't even waste your time. I spent hours on it and it cracked everywhere I put it. It cracked. And then I spent all those hours sanding for nothing. But at least I got some skills out of there. Is it really a waste of time if you gain skills out of it? Or some sort of skills out of it? A new skill out of it? I don't think so. I'm staining it with October Brown, which is the porch stain I intended for the entire of the porch, the entirety of the porch. I only went with one coat up here at the beginning, but I end up actually going in and doing a double coat of it to match my porch because I did a double coat on my porch for just durability, and I didn't like the way that the one coat on the fireplace looked against the double coat that was on the deck. So I ended up actually, you'll see at the towards the end of this video, I go in and do a double coat of stain on this top here, and it really finishes it off. It looks way better with the double coat on there. I had to try and come up with something to redeem this faux stone. <laughs> I did not like the color. It was way too gray blue for me. I'm not a gray blue kind of person at all. I've never really been. It looks beautiful in other homes, but in my home, I like the warm kind of look. And if it is cool, I like the warmer cool kind of look. I don't like the blue tones. So I had to get creative with how I was going to redeem this. And I ended up going over it and doing a whitewash, but I didn't want it too white. So I went in and added this antique white outdoor exterior paint and I added acrylic paint to it. I added caramel colored acrylic paint to give me this really creamy beige color and I used that as my base color on top of the whitewash and then I just built on top of that with different colors and I mixed a bunch of different acrylic paints with exterior paint in hopes that the exterior paint would kind of 
counter, you know, it wouldn't counteract the exterior paint, the acrylic, the, I would hope that the exterior paint would kind of eat the acrylic paint. Do y'all get what I'm saying? The, it would still be exterior, even though I added acrylic paint, because <laughs> it was more exterior than it was acrylic. So I just built on different colors. I did a creamier color, a beigeier color, all of which I mixed myself with the exterior paint. And then I went in and started dabbing, like sponging on the stones to give it dimension. So I first used the stain. I used October brown to dab onto the stones to give it some dimension underneath it and then I did the antique white and then I mixed the antique white with this caramel color here and went over it and then I did it again with a darker caramel color and went over it and then I went in with different acrylic mixtures to dab on the stones to give it some dimension because I really wanted that warm I had a particular kind of stone in my mind when I went to do this and I really wanted that warm stone to come through and I wanted it to look like it had some dimension and not be flat and I was talking about the exterior paint eating the acrylic paint I didn't mean actual eating that's just how my brain works I didn't want the acrylic paint to affect the exterior part of the exterior paint. I wanted it to last and be durable. So I used more exterior paint than I did acrylic paint, obviously. I just used the acrylic paint as sort of a tinter. And then I went in with a darker acrylic exterior paint mixture and I just dabbed it on different stones to make basically give it diversity and not make it one flat color because I wanted it a bunch of different colors. I spent too much time wasting on wood filler on this beam right here. I wanted it to look like a thick beam but it ended up cracking so I didn't even worry about doing that with the next beam I, and it looked just as good so I shouldn't have been messing with wood filler outdoor anyway I worked with it before on the inside of the house into an in interior stuff and it works really well but exterior it did not work for me I had Shane make a mantle out of a two by four and a thicker piece of wood and I did that because I wanted sort of a ledge like you can see here there's they're not one side it's not like a shadow box mantle like I had in my trailer in the trailer park I wanted some sort of dimension that that's the word for today <laughs> the today's videos were dimension so I had a thicker piece of wood on top and then I had Shane put a two by four underneath it and kind of boxed it out that way and it gave it this nice little edge here and it gave it some character I went over it with one coat of stain as well after I wasted more time <laughs> with wood filler. I did the one coat of stain on this as well to match that upside down chevron. Like I said, I eventually realized later on in this video that I do not like that. I knew something was off whenever I went to give y'all the after shot of it whenever it looked like this here in a second. I gave y'all the after shot and I wasn't completely happy with it. It was beautiful and I loved it, but it looked like it was missing something and it was definitely missing that second coat because that second coat not only made it look cleaner and fresher, but it made that stone pop that really light warm stone against the double coat of October brown stain really makes that stone pop so that's what it was missing the whole time I kept thinking man this looks really rustic and I usually look like rustic I mean I'm not a huge fan of rustic right here it looks rustic it looked kind of red rustic sort of and I wasn't happy with that and I used the same color of stain here on it that I did on the porch but when I went to do the porch I did the one coat and it looked just like that chevron with the one coat but then I did the double coat and it completely transformed it and made it a deeper richer brown and I was like that's what it's missing so whenever I realized the effect the double coat had on the deck that's when I realized I wanted to do a double coat on the upside down chevron piece on the fireplace while I really do love the October Brown by Valspar, I will say this porch took several weeks, probably a month and a half, maybe almost two months. I don't even know. The time has flown, but it took a while to finish. And these first two coats on the porch look significantly different than the newer stained portions of the porch. It's already got some wear and tear on it. Now, you could chalk that up to me having kids, me having dogs. I don't know, but you would think it would last a little bit better more you know than a month and a half I, I mean it's lasted it just it looks very dingy it looks very worn already so I'm anxious to see how well it works throughout the winter I know this is the same stuff that I used on my deck at the trailer park and it did have wear and tear on it after a year it didn't look good at all it needed to freshen it needed to be freshened up so that might be the case with this deck either way it's a gorgeous color and I don't mind putting in the extra work to um you know fix it later on if it starts looking dingy or scratched up or something I don't mind that so I'm not really too worried about it it's just interesting to see that it's already having some wear and tear on it 
Um, and it, it definitely was left to basically cure for a hot minute. We didn't use this porch. I used the scours you can get from the Dollar Tree to go in between the planks because I couldn't get anything other than that and the foam brushes you can get at the Dollar General to work in between the planks. Right here, you can see it's starting to come together, but not completely. This is where we've left off. So this is all new territory for you guys right now. We're starting back on the steps. We had to take quite a bit of time away from the steps because of the weather. And then we also had to order extra wiring because the wiring wasn't long enough in order to link these all together. So we had to order extra wiring from Amazon and we had to wait for it to get here so that we could get these suckers wired because we couldn't build any more of the steps until we got these bottom ones wired. Otherwise we wouldn't have any access to the bottom ones. That's why we had to work from the bottom up and while we left a portion, a sliver of a portion on the porch undone so we could get in and wire those top layers of steps. It was just easier to do it that way because Shane had more access to the wires behind the plate there, the back plate of the step. And he essentially had to play Legos with these wires. So he had to wire one to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other. And there was nine of them that he had to wire in total because we had three in rows three times. So he, he spent a lot of time wiring these behind the steps. And if he had had to go underneath the steps to use these extension cables, it would have been a mess. He already had to go underneath the steps to fix some stuff. And he was not a fan because he is terrified of spiders. And he could have, there's no way he could have spent all that time that it took him to wire these in the back. It wasn't, it, it wasn't hard. It just took a lot of time because those wires are little and he had to thread them through the steps. So he couldn't have done that while he was underneath the steps. Cause you'll see in a little bit how claustrophobic he is. Uh, uh He cannot do it. You can see here the difference between the middle completed step. It's not completely completed, but the guts are up and the supports up and everything. The structure of it is done. You can see the difference between the middle steps and the steps on the sides of it rather than using big like 14 long pieces of wood Shane pieced smaller pieces of wood together so that he could work on one particular area at a time and we can make sure it was secure and really level the stairs being level and not slanted was something that we were really worried about because we were worried we were going to have them slanting because we did have to work with an incline and we didn't want to make them go downhill on purpose or go uphill on purpose. So we had to really be friends, best friends with the leveler. <laughs> and we had to do one area at a time. That way we can make sure that it was level and there was no slants or anything like that. Because the last thing you want are slanted steps. <laughs> That's the last thing you want. So he's going in and he's adding supports. You can see here the small boards, just like he did underneath the actual deck part of the porch. He's going in and adding a lot of supports. I asked him to do this because I am heavier and I do want these to last a long time. Um, same as I can't just hop on a Dollywood ride. I got to be careful about what steps I choose to walk on. I, I don't even go eat an Olive Garden because I'm afraid I'm going to break the chair. So I asked Shane and he's always super like he's always like Marina but he always does it for me because he knows that it makes me feel better. So he's going in adding extra support and then working one area at a time digging out extra areas extra space he needed there on the right of the third little staircase right there and he's working on the back end of the stairs first and then he'll go in and he'll do the actual footstep area of the stairs too like i said he's working from the ground up so that he can wire in the deck lights a lot easier i wanted it to look like the deck spaces on the actual steps so in between the pieces of lumber here he's using for the cosmetic part of the steps He's using a deck spacer in between it, so I get the same gap that I have up on top of the deck with those planks. I just preferred that look. I liked the steps having that deck gap in them. I could have done it like a whole piece, like a one by eight or a one by six or something like that, but I wanted that deck look on the steps as well, but I wanted it close enough together to where something like a cane or something couldn't get down in there and trip somebody up if they have a cane or something like that. While I did want them to be aesthetically pleasing to like my liking, I didn't want to sacrifice the safety precautions of on these things like stuff like the gaps in between the lumber or the uh, it being slanted or stuff like that like I, I told Shane I said I want these to look a certain way but I want them safe first and foremost because I got a lot of people I love 
that are going to be coming up and down these a lot, like Shane included. So I don't want anybody falling. I didn't want these to be unsafe. So Shane spent a lot of time making it aesthetically pleasing to me, but he spent even more time making sure it was structurally sound and safe for somebody to use. We have put a lot of money, effort, and time into this project, and we want it to last a really long time. Nothing's what it seems, but I feel gravity is holding me down. It's there for all to see, through dirt and through debris. Everyone is leaving this forsaken town. bigger than the measurement uh -huh. that way I can hammer it and it kind of digs into the ground and it gets nice and tight do you want to show them what you're talking about here's the support that way this wood here is nice and thick I don't think we've got much to worry about but I'm just thinking ahead like 10 years in the future it still won't buckle in the middle does that mean 10 years in the future you expect to be married to me still I expect to be with you till the day I die <laughs> even in heaven even in heaven, you're stuck with me for the rest of your life. I done told you that. That, that threat was real. <laughs> So Shay's added extra support here and he's going to add extra support here because we are done with the steps and now we're moving to finish off the porch right here, but we realized something. We came up with a boo-boo. You came up with a boo-boo. No, it was a we. Uh, you're guilty by association. <laughs> um, so the steps come out here, but the porch comes out here. <laughs> so I'm going to have to take a saw and saw the edges but you off. Can't. Which, because the lots are evenly put in there. <laughs> well, I don't think. I, no, honestly, I'll be able to tell. I'll no, be able to tell. An inch and a half. I don't think an inch and a half is going to bother. I will be able to tell, Shane. That's stupid. Well, I mean, I ain't the one that made the steps longer than Just the board. Let port. me cut off an inch and a half. No, you ain't gonna be able the, to tell. I am. Let me show you why I'm gonna be able to tell. See these lots? We got nine lots. We got a lot right there. Where you got that? Where can you see? Got a lot right there. Got a lot right there. Got a lot right there. A lot right there, a lot right there, a lot right there, and a lot right there, a lot right there, a lot right there. All nine of those lots are evenly spaced and perfectly spaced in between three thirds, one thirds, right? If he takes that down, that's not going to be evenly spaced it's just like these right are. It doesn't matter. I'm going to know. You wouldn't be able to see it though. <sighs> so. We're going to have to shave some off the edge pieces anyway, so we're going to go ahead and cut it down, and I'm not happy about it. Once we got the stairs built up, we could finish off that little sliver on the porch. Doing the wrap around the beam required us to finish this little sliver on the porch first because we had to basically work like the steps, then the little sliver of area on the porch, and then we could start working on wrapping the beam and making it chunkier and thicker. 
literally you just box in a piece of wood it's literally building a box on top of a box <laughs> all of that time building from the ground up and guess what the lights were not working can you tell me if it comes on yeah how are you gonna fit in there yes oh this is a forewarning to any spiders. Stay away from me. Or what? I'll scream like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Your little leg, take it out. But it's not. <laughs> and that freaking hurt. Oh. <laughs> so I learned something today. What? It's not the best idea to throw all of your broken screws down here. <laughs> I could have told you that before anything happened. Yeah, yeah. Your little legs look so tiny. Did I not connect it? That's what I asked you. I said, did you connect them? Oh yeah, they're connected. I did, but... <laughs> Are you not claustrophobic? Oh, I'm so claustrophobic right now. <laughs> Oh, I could never. <laughs> I am dying. Oh my gosh. Alright. What are you doing? I need an extra cord. Can you hand it to me and do it fast? Because I'm about to. <laughs> Man, I've never seen karma work so fast. Oh my gosh, I'm here, gonna die. Here. Where? Right here. Throw it. Oh my gosh, it's crawling towards me. Alright, I'm gonna have to kill it. What is it? Spot you said alright, I'm glad to kill it. <laughs> Look at it. It's dancing. <laughs> he is pissed. Shane. <laughs> 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 <You're so laughs> I don't want to be here. Uh, hurry, Shane. Hurry. Uh, oh, I got to go out that way, too. He's going to meet me. No, he's going to meet you in the air. <laughs> He can be like, you remember me? And I'll be like, no, sir. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> His little feet hanging out. Stop making fun of my feet. <laughs> it ain't cool. He got hateful with me earlier, and I said, I've never seen karma work so fast. <laughs> I don't even believe in karma, but man, it was it was on a roll. <laughs> okay, breathe, Sam, breathe. Breathe, 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 breathe. It's on. Hallelujah, praise Jesus. But the other one isn't. Yeah, I know, because it's unplugged. Oh, do you have to crawl all the way under there? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, Shane. He has to crawl all the way under there. He's like right here right now. He has to crawl all the way over there because that one's not plugged in either. <laughs> this reminds me of some of those hoods. You gotta be used to this though. You gotta get up under them hoods and everything to check their systems. It yeah, it's on. Now, oh my gosh. What? Oh my gosh. What? There's two gigantic spiders right above my freaking head. What kind? Oh my gosh. <laughs> what kind? Big old freaking long leg ones. Ain't those the ones that their mouths are too small for them to do damage? Yeah, and this one's still dancing. <laughs> okay. Okay. Be careful, there's a big one at your knee. I swear. I don't know how. Ow. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing with the spider. I need you to go on somewhere. So, we're just gonna rush you over there. Don't you crawl towards me. Did you just throw the spider? <laughs> Shane will pick up snakes. He's picked up a snake for Nanny, like just I'm not even knowing what kind it is. He'll pick up lizards, whatever, but spiders. <laughs> He's walking it off right now. <laughs> Where are you going? Mm -mm. No, sir. That's gross. 
I can deal with any buck. I can deal with roaches. I can deal with centipedes. I can deal with all that. I cannot deal with spiders. And especially when I look up and they're looking down. Oh, It looks really good though. I gotta put that one. That was the scariest moment of my life. Those look really good. Really good. Especially once I stain that and you're, it's just gonna be dark and that light's gonna be coming out of the dark. Like, that's gonna look so good. Oh man. Wow. I told you guys that Shane has a particular way that he does this. He puts the thicker pieces on the outside and then puts the thinner pieces on the inside. And that way that the lines are on the inside of the porch and on the outside of the porch. And it just makes them look like cleaner from like the side. He has a way that he does this though. Yeah, see how it's flush down here? But where these pieces of wood come bowed, they come a little crooked. So you can see that if I screw this in right here, it's gonna be not flush with this piece here. I'm going to take a screw and I'm going to put it in right here, pull it out. You just got to hold it just for a second, okay? And just like that. Getting the faceplate on the steps was a little bit tricky because it was such an angle. We were working at a complete angle at an incline one way and a decline the other way. So it was a little bit tricky and Shane had to hammer a lot of the pieces of wood deep down into the ground to make a rut so that they would land kind of flush with the step, but he got it done and it ended up looking really, really good, especially once we got it stained. I was a little bit worried because we had to kind of piece it together, but he made it work. He started working on the shiplap. We had tried this before and it just didn't turn out well. So we took it down and we decided to line them up with the shiplap on the side as best as we could to make it look cleaner. So Shane got to working on that. And while he was working on that, I got to staying in the porch. It was a lot of work, but compared to the work Shane was putting in over there with the shiplap, <laughs> I had it easy. <laughs> I, it was a little bit harder once I got to the right side over there that's against the hill because we had to dig out and the steps go basically right into the hill. It was a little bit tricky to stain around that area, but I love this the way that looks, by the way, like the way that the, the stairs meet that hill. We have our drain system in place too so that the water doesn't sit and rot on those steps and it doesn't like go down the hill and like just, you know, sit on the steps and rot them. So I'm really excited about that because I was worried about what it would look like whenever the steps met the hill because of such the, the incline. But it ended up looking so pretty and Shane did it so well. I love it. It's heavy weather 
Okay, so I'm conflicted about something. I did one coat of semi -trans semi transparent. Um, I almost said semi truck. The intrusive like thoughts. <laughs> semi transparent stain. The same color of stain that's on my porch porch, the deck part of the porch. I did one coat of it there, two coats on my deck part of my porch. It looks off now that I have the whole porch stained. So I'm conflicted because I'm like, do I make it darker to match the porch or do I leave it like this? And it kind of stands out like a sore thumb and not like in a good way. So I think, I think I'm going to darken it up to match the rest of my porch so it can be cohesive and kind of flow along with the rest of the porch and not be so standout-ish because this up here is giving rustic, right? And nothing else on my porch is giving rustic. It's giving more like modern farmhouse kind of thing, modern boho farmhouse sort of baby. If boho, if modern boho and modern farmhouse had a baby, that's what my porch is giving right now. I also wanted the stone to be the attention seeking part of this whole thing. So, Me. in order to do that, yeah, the shame of the whole project. <laughs> So notice me simpa. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna make this darker so that that can stand out against it because I'm looking at how it stands out against the porch here and there's obviously a huge difference and it makes it pop when it's darker. So we're gonna go th do that real quick while Shana's finishing up on the back of it and then I need to do a second coat here on the front of the steps. I need to do a second coat on the pillar and edge around it with some cardboard. The sun is shining it right in my eyes though and it is burning up i'm sweating like i always sweat but i'm extra sweating today we only need the two of us together, two of us together. we only need the two of, two of us together we only need the two of us together cause we got love remember whenever I was telling you about how the wood filler cracked on me do you see what I'm talking about all that time I spent getting those areas perfectly and it cracked so thankfully going over with the second coat this is a really trust the process sort of project it does not look good until it looks good <laughs> so uh, thankfully the second coat of the stain it worked out and like it made it look a lot better and I was able to get in the grooves and really take care of some of those cracked places and kind of conceal them a little bit but this project project is definitely a wait until the last minute like you're worried the entire time that what you visualize is not going to happen sort of thing. I'm always confident in Shane's ability to make something happen but I'm not so confident in mine. I'm confident about a lot of things in my life. I'm confident in my walk with Jesus. I'm confident in my appearance, despite what some people have to say about it. I'm confident about a lot of things. But when it comes to me working in my home and and just in me in the home, I'm not confident because I haven't been doing it a really long time. And I was never taught how to do it properly. So it's a lot of mess ups. And, you know, the more you mess up, the more likely it is that you'll lose some of that confidence because you just keep messing up but I keep coming back and that's where my drive comes from is even when I mess up a project even when I mess up something within my home or I, I should have done this in homemaking better or I should have cleaned that in a different way no matter what no matter how many times I fall I keep coming back you can knock me down a thousand times and I'm so bullheaded I will come back a thousand and one like that how I am so I it's good that I have that kind of mentality otherwise things like this wouldn't work out Sometimes 
next time we'll be decorating it. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope y'all have a blessed morning, even not, whatever it is, wherever you're at. Know that I love you, but Jesus loves you so much more. I'll see y'all later.